The producers of copper in Europe are fully exposed to higher energy and EU regulatory compliance costs. This is because the global copper pricing mechanism, facilitated through the London Metal Exchange, does not allow such costs to be passed on to customers. One very important way to help offset such costs is to use more copper scrap and copper containing waste. This business model is very much in line with the EU's goals for reindustrialization and resource efficiency. The EU is the only region of the world where some producers of copper operate using only recycled feedstock. It therefore sets the world standard in process technology development and emissions control. Recycling of metals means returning the various metals contained in end-of-life materials or industrial waste into a form that is suitable for reuse. Over decades, given the ever-increasing use of alloys, which are metal mixtures, copper recycling has evolved into multi-metal recycling. In Belgium, Metallochimique recycles a broad variety of low-grade copper materials into pure copper plus other metals such as tin, lead and nickel. This is done using pioneering and state-of-the-art European technologies. Copper is a product that is quite expensive in producing them, but on the other hand we are we know all that that is very easily to use it the second to the third time and that's the songs for this branch and um, we have to explain it to the members of parliament that it is a very modern very useful instrument and that the final balance the economic and the environment balance for produce and use copper is positive not everybody uh, aware about that but i think uh, there's a good argument and i hope that the copper industry will fight for this uh, very interesting economic approach. Modern recycling has also been required to overcome the challenges from the increasing complexity and miniaturization of products, plus the ever-decreasing content of copper in them. In Europe, while there is an increase in the overall quantities of copper scrap available, the quality of the scrap is steadily decreasing. Legislation also has a huge effect on all aspects of recycling. Chemical legislation imposing, for example, restrictions on one metal, will impact the recycling of all the other metals. Recyclers will think twice before buying scrap, which contains metals that are subject to restrictions, and in particular, those which need authorization under reach. The new legislation on lead harmonized classification is such an example. I believe this will worsen the difficult access that European smelters already face in securing the raw materials they need at a competitive price. The ultimate business outcome will be that the European Union will see more and more of its valuable end-of-life products being exported to regions with lower regulatory pressures. The sector needs EU support to address the export restrictions and import subsidies imposed by some countries that distort fair and competitive access to the global market for scrap. We also need the member states to be more rigorous in the enforcement of waste shipment regulations. This would result in much more of this material being reused within the EU and not exported to locations with far lower recycling efficiencies and environmental standards. We have a problem in the controlling system on the European border. We know it from a lot of countries, even my country, but Netherlands, Belgium, Great Britain, uh, there is not enough control institution and uh, in the last uh, studies we have 400 container who were controlled and there were 340 containers who are not legal. And there you can see that our value goes there outside to China, but uh, I am a European and I am interested in European raw material because we need it for our business. The economy created by metal recycling could be expanded if more scrap was available and accessible to European companies who are experts in the recovery, recycling and reworking of such materials. Certainly there is a big chance for job creation, but that is only possible if we have already implemented all this legislation. But first of all, we have to clear 
in what way we want to go on and to circle and waste policy proposal is a good way for that. And um, we will have a lot of new jobs. And uh, it depends a little bit on the member states if they don't do nothing. We have seen that in the past by the Waste Framework Directive. But if the member states work with us, then we will have a big success. And that's good for our international competitiveness. We are currently looking at uh, a cycle a product cycle that uh, is disconnected at certain points of the circle. And the measures that we might propose would, see, would uh, aim at linking the parts of the product cycle to each other, so that on the one hand uh, the uh, input of primary material at the beginning of the, of the cycle would be just what we need, uh, but we would also try to maximize the, the putting the recycled material back into the circle, therefore uh, also supporting the, uh, the objective of decoupling growth from the actual uh, raw material or prime, prime material use. But I think we want to come to a situation where we make maximum efficient use of all primary and secondary materials. Information about the life cycle of products. Uh, information about the environmental and resource impact of products will certainly be an important part of uh, the new uh, proposal. To support the investment and employment that this generates, the copper sector needs EU policymakers to ensure a well thought out balance between on the one hand, legislation on chemicals, industrial emissions and climate change, and on the other, Europe's goals for more sustainable growth and a circular economy. What was proposed by the Commission was the work program uh, for 2015 and that included the uh, intention to withdraw the waste package. Uh, the formal decision on this withdrawal is yet to be taken, uh, but it's clear that uh, Vice President Timmermans made a commitment on behalf of the Commission that a new ambitious and practical a circular economy proposal covering the other half of the circle would be presented before the end of 2015. Uh, what does that mean to our understanding and the final decision have not been making is that on the one hand uh, the uh, elements of the existing waste proposal would be revised and reviewed to take into account the areas of criticism uh, and additional elements of uh, circular economy policy initiatives would be added. I think this uh, circular waste policy recommendation from the former Commissioner Potocnik was an excellent proposal and he shows us that we are going in a new century of waste policy in the future. Our way as we have done in the last 20 years is a disaster because we put too many raw material on the landfill and uh, I think that has to be changed immediately and it is not only a point of environment, it is even an economic point because we have a extremely strong growing population in the world, even in Europe. So we have to do it in an economic way. It's not a burden, it's a chance, a big economic chance. All of this is work in progress and uh, the uh, important decisions on how far to go on which parts will still have to be taken and of course there is one important piece of work that might be involved if we go in the direction of very concrete proposals is that we might have to undertake additional impact assessments so uh, it is only in the let's say in one or two months time that we will be able to have a very firm timing and that the structure will become clearer